Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. Isaiah 44, verse 3. Title message is, Are You Thirsty? Are You Thirsty? Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Brother Calvin, can you pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today's um, gathering, Lord. Just Amen. thank you so much that we get to gather, Lord. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, for we're still wicked sinners, Lord. And until we leave this world, until we leave this fleshy body, Lord, we need you every single yes. day, every single hour, every single second. Amen. Lord, I just pray that um, you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, give him the words that you want him to say. Preach to us, prick our hearts, convict yes. us, yes. Lord. May you bless this gathering and the service. May you dwell among us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you thirsty? No, that's uh, one of the characters of human being. You become thirsty when you don't have you know, sufficient water, liquid. Even right now, you know, for some of you, you are probably thirsty because you didn't have enough water in your system. And there are a lot of people who get dehydrated, you know, especially when you are out there hiking, exercising, whatever you're doing, you get thirsty. And you know, for me, one, you know, I don't drink enough water like I should. You know, there's recommended you know, amount of water you should drink. They say you know, six cups at least. You know, sometimes they say eight cups, minimum four cups. And it is important that you get hydrated. We had a recent story, you know, where family of three and their dog just died. You know, they went on a hiking and they were found dead. At first people thought it was some kind of chemical issue, but they say it's not. So now they're leaning towards you know, some kind of heat stroke. But it's still you know, curious because dog died too. You know, I mean, dog dies of you know, heat stroke or dehydration, I'm not sure. But one thing for sure is that when you are active, when you're moving, but even when you're not moving, when you're not active, you need water because you're going to become thirsty. However, as Christians, so many people are thirsty spiritually, but they don't realize it. That's the sad part. Like you, after you get saved, you have a new man. And it needs water. It needs something to be hydrated, to go on with life. However, you don't give water to your new man. It's drying up. The throat's drying. Have you ever had times where you were so thirsty, you feel like you're going to faint? To me, majority of the Christians in America especially, are about to faint. Whether you admit it or not, I mean, even, in, with, even those who are here and those who's listening, even myself, I mean, if we're not careful, we're going to faint sooner or later. Why? Because we're too dry spiritually. Wow. Our land, say if you and I have a land, is too dry. It has become barren. It has become really hard. It has become unworkable, and it has become unprofitable. So I need to find some wells of water, living water in my land. But I can't find any because it's all dried up. Like your Christian life is so dried up, it's unprofitable. Turn your Bibles to... John chapter 15, 
John chapter 15. You and I must recognize that, you know, our spiritual ground has dried up or is really drying up right now. John chapter 15, verse 16. The Bible says, John 15, 16, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give you. So there's lack of fruit in your life. It has become barren. Why? Because it's dry. And I've me and my wife, we run a little garden. Now, some of you might have seen it. It's, it's tiny, but it bears fruit. We have jalapenos, which we eat sometimes. Very good. I think it's better than the market quality because the love goes into it. There's thyme or thyme, right? And there's, well, what is that you put on your steak when you eat? Uh, rosemary, right? You give water regularly, man, they grow, and they're very green. But say, if you're on a vacation, and you're busy, and you forget to water them, man, they wither very quickly. Especially in this California heat, they wither very, very quickly. And before you know it, you press on the soil. It's very, very dry. But one thing is that, if you start giving them water, even though they look like they're gonna die, you know, after a few hours, after overnight, they spring up with new life. And I know, you know, Andrew and Kathy is here, you know, they, they know how it works, right? Growing trees and bearing fruits. In your Christian walk, do you feel that you're barren? Do you feel like you're producing enough fruits? Do you feel like it's water enough? Nothing will grow on a dry ground. And sometimes when you look at some parts of the world where there's mostly deserts, right? Like parts of China, Mongolia, you know, Africa, I mean, we have Sahara Desert, right? Nothing grows there, right? Here and there, there's oasis, you know, some special, but mostly speaking, nothing grows there. And there's no fruits from there. But when you look at your Christian life, your Christian life is like Sahara Desert. It's like you're walking and walking, walking, but there's no fruit. I mean, as Christians, like as our Lord said, you should go out and bring forth fruit. Well, how come there's no fruit in your life when it comes to spiritual things? And you're like, what are they? Oh, glad you asked. We go to that verse many, many times. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Are you bearing spiritual fruits in your life? Or is it too dry? Are you ready to water, water your spiritual ground? Because if you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to dry up. Plants give you plenty of time to give them water. I mean, they, they, they have a very, very strong you know, will to survive. But there comes a time when you don't give them water in due time, they're going to die. And once plants are dead, they're dead. You can revive them. You can, like, resurrect them. They're just dead, right? I'm sure Brother Nathan experiences at the schools or anywhere, right? If there's no one to take care of the garden, it's just going to die. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 
meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. Are you bearing this fruit? Again, it's a singular term. Are you bearing fruit of the Spirit, like all of it? It's not just one. You know, because some people, they say, I have much love. But you lack faith, long-suffering, and goodness. Some people say, I have much faith. And I believe everything the Bible says, and I do ministry, and I do everything for church. But you lack love and gentleness to your family, to your loved ones. That's not producing right fruit. You, if you are bearing spirit, fruit of the Spirit, you'll be bearing all of these. And in order for you to do that, you have to crucify your flesh, all the affections and lusts, in order to do it. Then why is your spiritual life barren? Why is it full of dry ground? Why is it just dry? Why? Because you're filled with your own affections and lusts. You have to get rid of your lusts. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. You know, a lot of times, people don't understand how powerful lust is. Christians are no different. You might have better solution than non-Christians, but the temptations, but the effects of it are all the same. Why do you think so many Christians fall into addictions. Literally, man, shouldn't you be a little different from unsaved people, especially when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and then you committed your life to the Lord, and many of you, you surrender your life to the Lord, right, in His service, but why is it that you're addicted to your lusts? And those lusts are a variety, right? It could be, you know, sexual immortality, right? Or immorality. Like you have immoral thoughts going through you all the time. Think about it. If you don't have clean thoughts, if you don't have pure thoughts, if you don't avoid and reject those dirty thoughts, your ground will definitely become like a cement. It will never be broken. It will never be good enough. It will never become a good soil. It's like this. You're pouring this pollutant and chemicals constantly to the ground. The fruit wants to bear. Fruit wants to grow. However, you're constantly putting that wicked thoughts in your heart and in your mind. And a lot of Christians are addicted to lust. You know, it could be porn. It could be, you know, relationship outside of marriage. It could be relationship before marriage. You're like, Uh, but, you know, the world does it. Man, that, that's the stupidest excuse that you and I could ever give. The world does it. People around me does it, right? You know, I have to go to party and I got to do something. I want to stay look cool. I'm at work, right? You know, we're at a gathering. I have to do something. But that's one thing that would definitely keep you dry and keep you thirsty as a Christian if you do not resolve, get right with the Lord regarding your sins of bless. When we look at many of the verses in the Word of God, even same chapter, look at Galatians 5. 
Right now, let's go through 17 again, starting with verse 17, 517. It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Again, verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. I mean, these are all sexually immortal sins. Lust after lust. As a Christian, you know what's the right thing to do. You're supposed to avoid, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil. You're supposed to abstain from anything that might cause you to sin. And especially this day and age, especially where it's so easy to meet people online, you have to be careful. Each time you click a button, even if you're going to a good site to do good things, some wicked pop-up just comes up. I mean, literally, you, you're afraid to click something. You're afraid afraid to open anything because 99% of those things, like all of them are like just wicked stuff. They want you to just look at these things. That's why I'm horrified to have kids use the internet on their own. Whether they mean it or not, they're going to encyclopedia to look, study, research some stuff, and suddenly, not just one, two, three, four, five, multiple things just pop up. And don't tell me they're about the Word of God. It doesn't have KJV verses for the day. No. It's all about, you know, wicked pictures showing up, wicked videos playing, all those things. And as parents, you have to protect your children from those things. You have to. They don't know better. They're not going to come to you like, Daddy, Mommy, some will, but majority of me is like, oh, there's like, you know, dirty stuff on my internet, you know. What should I do? No. Some of them maybe just close it right away, but some of them will dwell upon it. And when you come in, they'll quickly close the window, just like everybody. Just like what you've done in the past, right? You know, like, oh, Someone's coming. My mom, my dad, my brother, my sister's coming. Okay, time to close all the windows, right? But the thing is, you know, God doesn't forget, though. God has recorded everything. Now, you and I cannot hide our sin from God. You and I could hide sins from each other, your loved ones, your wife, your husband, your friends, your brothers and sisters, but you cannot hide your sin from and Almighty God, He's recording everything. And especially after you got saved, you got to be judged for every sin that you have not confessed. Then, when we look at these, you are so thirsty spiritually, your land is full of dry ground. Why? Because you're messing around with adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lasciviousness. You're messing around with the lust of flesh. You're messing around things that you're not supposed to as a Bible believer, as a Christian, as a father, as a son, as a mother, as a daughter. Why do you mess around with those things? The thing about being dry is that just like when a land is full of rain, just like in... You know, if you see any documentary like nature, when water pours down in a dry land, you know, it turns green beautifully, and it turns green very fast. You know, I drive down that 57 freeway over by Brea area. It's right now barren. It's like all brown. But if we get any rain, I mean, literally even few drops of rain, even drizzle, Next day, day after, it turns green. And I actually see the cows come out. 
and they have a cow farm there, and I, they release them if there's enough green, you know. But there's nothing for them to eat. It's just dirt right now, and all like thistles, right? And it spreads. So it spreads either good way or the bad way. You know, your spiritual stuff will spread or your fleshly stuff will spread. Then what happens is that if you keep on let your spiritual self stay thirsty and dry and water and give all of your hydration to this fleshly lust, what's going to happen? You're just going to produce all your fruits is going to be lustful stuff. That's why you Christians do certain things that you should have or you never thought you would do before you got into certain things, right? Like, oh, you know, there's always, always, you know, sad cases where, you know, brother, you know, pastor, I never thought I'll go this far. I never thought I'd go this far with this sin. How can you not? And me coming from experience too. When you water the fruit, what's going to happen when you water the plant? Is it going to stay the same? No, it's going to grow. Whether it's good fruit or bad fruit, whether it's good tree or bad tree, it's going to grow and it's going to bear its fruit. When you keep on watering your sinful nature, your lust of flesh, what's going to happen? It's going to bear fruit. That's why you really have to be careful with what you watch, what you let your children watch, because that's the first step. You watch things on TV, you watch things on the internet, and it's going to lead one thing to the other. How many times do you regret? How many times do you feel so ashamed? How many times do you think that you could do it over when you say, what if I never seen that before in my life? What if I never encountered it? What if I never clicked that thing. What if and what if? It comes and haunts you, you know. However, it could be all worldly sorrow. It's not godly sorrow. Godly sorrow works to repentance. Worldly sorrow, you feel like, man, I feel self-pity, you know. Why did that happen to me? Why did that circumstance happen? You know, why did that internet link pop up? You know, why did that person come into my life? You start feeling sorry for yourself and giving all of these excuses. And as you give excuses and feeling sorry for yourself, that fruit, wicked fruit, is still growing. It's still growing. You could justify all you want. You could give excuses all you want. But since you haven't completely repented and turned away from it, which means that you're still watering it, little by little. You might not do it for three days, but you do it on the fourth day. Oh, the fruits and plants like, oh, thank you so much. I needed that water. You're like, oh, man, I want you to die. I need you out of my life. You wicked sin, and you go five days. Oh, and the... the plant's really, really about to die now. Oh, man. Oh, man, please fill me with that dirty pictures. Fill me with that dirty people. Fill me with that, you know, dirty stuff. I'm about to die. And then you're like, oh, man. I got nothing better to do. Why not? Then you do it. And then the wicked plant, wicked sin, wicked fruits, like, oh, thank you. Now I'm going to push you harder. Man, I don't want to go through that again, right? I, don't you think that your flesh is like, okay, once you get over that hump, whether it's good or bad, everything becomes so much easier, right? Uh, like some people will spend you know, money on dumb stuff. To them, it's not dumb. 
right? Some people will spend so much money on like say, you know, this website or this app that like, it's not dumb, even though it's financially burdening the whole family or themselves. Like, it's for my enjoyment. You know, you start out with, you know, buying this for a few dollars. Oh, it makes game more fun. And then you suddenly, you know, you wiped out your bank account. And then your pleasure turns into shame and sorrow. Many, many times you have to recognize this. That dry ground, unless you give him water, well, nothing, nothing will ever happen. You could talk to the dry ground all you want. It could be like, hey, you better, better bear fruit. Hey, I'm not going to sin. Hey, you know, I'm going to become spiritual. Hey. I'm going to pray more, read Bible. Hey, I'm going to do all this. Man, it's all talk. I could talk to my plant all, my, all I want. But if I don't give fruit to my plant, it's going to die. I mean, your spiritual life, for many of you, all you do is talk. And you're just talking, talking, and talking all you want. But there's still no fruit because there's no action. You're not hydrating it. You're not giving any water to your fruit. It's like, and then you start complaining to God. God, why is my life so horrible? Why aren't things working out in my life? Again, this is all coming out of your self-pity and excuses. It's not coming out of your godly sorrow. It's not about your repenting heart. A person who is repenting will not come to God with any excuses. A person who is repenting will truly be sorry for their sins, truly be sorry for a sinner who they are, and come to God to seek his mercy and grace and his forgiveness. But people who's full of worldly sorrow will just be like, you know what? It happened because of the circumstances. I mean, how many times have you said that and have you heard other people say it? You know, my plant is barren because of my circumstances. Because God hasn't blessed me with million dollars. God hasn't blessed me with rich family. Because God hasn't blessed me with better wife, better husband, better children, better friends, better job. That's why my land is barren. Full of excuses. Why? Because you're full of your affections and lusts. You have to crucify, crucify your flesh on a daily basis. You have to kill it, literally. If, it, if you don't have that commitment, then you're going to stay thirsty spiritually all your life until the Lord comes back or until you hang up your gloves here on earth. You're going to die as a spiritual man or woman, boy or girl. And that would be a sad sight in the sight of God. How sad do you think Lord Jesus Christ is right now looking at your garden? Think about it. Is it full of delicious, you know, very big fruits? Or is it just, man, like those non-water, everything dying, all dried up? garden. But you know what? Thank God you have hope. You and I have hope and we have solution. What's that solution? You have to water your ground with spiritual stuff. You got to start doing it right now. You got to start watering it with the word of God, with prayers, not just prayers for yourself, praying for others. You have to be in the ministry. You have to listen to preachings, Bible studies. You have to change your life. You have to turn away from the things that's been making your ground dry, making you thirsty all these years, and turn to God. 
turn to things of Lord Jesus Christ so that you bear some fruit, spiritual fruit, right? You know, be filled with the Holy Ghost every day. Then God will definitely pour water upon anyone that is thirsty. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you know, many days we just tend to forget how our ground is becoming more dry and dry. We neglect things of the Spirit, and we just gravitate towards things of the flesh, affections and lusts, Lord God. I pray that we'll take time, Lord, seriously, spend time with you in prayer, really getting ourselves right with you, Lord. We can't play games no more. We can't just be a pretenders and just be a churchgoers and have no fruits in our life. And you say, you shall know them by their fruits. Literally, we want to bear good fruits for you, Lord, instead of all these wicked things that harms us as well as ministry and number one, grieving you, Lord. Lord God, I pray that everyone here and listening will really water their spiritual side instead of flesh side and not be thirsty spiritually. We continue to pray for Pastor Shrive and his health. Heal him, Lord God, crank your will as soon as possible and be with everyone who's going through you know, illnesses and physical ailments. And we pray that, Lord, you'll be with African situation as well. And I pray that throughout the whole world, all of our men of God, you know, working for you, Lord, please be with them, protect them, continue to provide their needs, be an encouragement to them, Lord. And I pray that all of us will truly be privileged. I think about the privilege, think about the opportunity, and be thankful for where we're living and not just take it for granted and put it to waste, but actually do something for the freedom that you have given us in this country to freely serve you. Bless the rest of the day, Lord, and everything that's going to happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.